My name is Yara Sanger. I'm here at Java One Brazil on OT OTN launch. Uh, I'm uh, one of the directors of So Java and also Global Code, and I'm here with um, one of the most important scientists in the country, Ivone Mascarenhas, my grandmother, and we have a very nice story to share with you about uh, Java on two gen three generations project. Can you tell a little bit about your experience with IT? Well, what I can say it is that I'm not a programmer, but I always rely on programmers. And uh, Java people, it has been very, very useful for a long time. I remember the day when you called to tell about uh, a very interesting project uh, on the nuclear reactor. And uh, that was a kind of robotic project. Can you tell a little bit about uh, Java on science on this special project? Well, as far as I know, most of the programmers that work in science, they also use Java very much. Uh, sometimes embedded in the programs written in other languages also. But anyway, uh, I think uh, we, can, we must rely on Java for most of the programs, especially when you have large amounts of data, uh, very complicated uh, uh, mathematical operations to do fast Otherwise, it is going to be very, very long calculations. This uh, experience uh, on Java and nuclear reactor was very interesting uh, work with Vinicius Sanger uh, on controlling the arm of the reactor that was holding the, the, the material, right? And also uh, use it to generate graphs and do some calculations uh, on the data that we get, uh, get from the nuclear reactor, right? Yes, you are right. Uh, the diffractometer is really a piece of very precise mechanics and uh, collects a large amount of data. It has to be operated via uh, robotics, so it is indispensable. You must have Java in the programming. Yeah, this is true. Java is everywhere. Java in science here in Brazil at University of Sao Paulo with Yvonne Mascarenhas. Thank you. Thank you very much for the opportunity.